Hey, how's it going? I've got another trip for you guys. This one I think will excite you. It was way more penguiny than the first one. We got some really cool shots for it. We also we did a lot more, um, a lot more getting out there, a lot more into the wild. This one is very, very far from the city. There was no one else in sight. I couldn't see the island from the mainland when we were leaving the harbor, and then I couldn't even see the mainland from the island when we were leaving out of that. So some pretty cool stuff, loads of penguins, some plankton snuck its way in there. Got some pretty cool stuff for you guys. All right, so first off, if you guys remember what the maps were like in the other videos, we have Auckland there in the south, and moving north from there, we have Tafernui, where we had the first study site. We're leaving from Omaha, which is just right by Tafernui, and heading way up to Mokahinau, which is a chain of islands way out there. It's several hours from Omaha. And so, we've got some shots going out there. It was really rough waters. It was pretty cold, because remember, it's winter here. Uh, being in the southern hemisphere, our seasons are reversed from in the northern hemisphere. And it took us quite a while to get out there. We saw a few cool things on the way. So we saw a bottlenose dolphin, hopped up a couple times. And they're the same ones that you have there in Corpus. We also saw a few of the New Zealand storm petrel. That was thought to be extinct for over 150 years, until it was rediscovered in 2003. And so that was pretty cool being able to see those. They're breeding in Little Barrier Island, which is right there on the map, right along the path that we were crossing by. And as we're getting out there, we pull into Mokahinau. And of course, it being the chain of islands, we're interested primarily in Pokahinu, or Burgess Island. And that's the main island of this island chain. It has a lighthouse there on top, as well as an A-frame house that we use whenever we're doing overnighter trips out there. But today is just a day trip. It's a beautiful island, loads of cliffs, loads of birds flying all around the clearest, bluest water I've seen in forever. It's it's just a pretty amazing island. And so we kind of had to jump to the island. There isn't a particularly safe place to just dock at. So we kind of jumped to the island. We brought pretty minimal gear. This is a pristine natural habitat. And what that means is there's no exotic species there interfering with the native species. There used to be cattle, there used to be rats, but the Department of Conservation here cleared them out. So we have to be care very careful with what we bring onto the island to make sure we don't introduce any seeds, uh, any insects, anything unexpected that could ruin the native life. And then we get to the really cool stuff, the nest boxes. And so the first couple we looked at, there really wasn't anything in them. They were empty, they looked like maybe some penguins had gone in them at some point, but then we get to the third one and open it up and, oh my god, there's a penguin in there. It was very cool. And then we take a second little look, and there's actually three penguins in there. Two newly hatched ones, from eggs that we knew were sitting there a month ago. They have a 36 day incubation period, so that makes sense for them to be about a week old. So they're, they're quite young there. We check out a few more boxes and find penguins, including a few that have moved into new boxes that weren't previously occupied. So they're doing very well. We've got more penguins than expected. It's exactly what we're looking for. So we do a little work there, check all the boxes, take a few feather samples that have fallen off the penguins, and then we set up camera traps. And those will work just like any other camera trap, like you'd use for hunting or for African safaris or anything. You set it up in front of the nest box, and anytime it detects motion, it takes a picture. We got one particularly cool one that's right in front of the entrance to the burrow. And this is a natural burrow instead of one of the nest boxes. So hopefully we'll get some really great pictures of penguins as they're ducking their way right out of the burrow. And then we headed off from there on some very rough waters. And as we went along, we were dropping plankton nets as we went at regular intervals. You need to start understanding the ecosystem at the very bottom, at the lowest levels of the food chain, and plankton pretty much are the lowest levels of the food chain. So we were dropping them at regular intervals, and then when we saw a massive cluster of seabirds, we set it up. Particularly whenever you're seeing all this density of wildlife, this density of biodiversity, you know there's something special going on, so we wanted to see which plankton these fish and these birds were most attracted to. So we dropped the nets in, dragged them for a couple minutes, and then sifted through them and sent them off to the lab to get analyzed. And that was the trip out to Mocha Hinao. It was a pretty amazing one, especially being able to see all those penguins and some penguin chicks. It's a very exciting trip, and if you have any questions, as usual, send them on to me, and I'll send you answers right away.